Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at control sensitivity. Now control sensitivity is kind of an interesting topic because for a lot of folks, uh, you know, they kind of set it to one way based on what they've read online and think it's okay, but not everybody really understands why it's set the way it is or, you know, some general best advice. And before I do get started and get kind of explaining things, uh, don't forget that at the end of the day, you're going to set the controls the way that makes most sense for you. You know, just because I set them one way does not mean that I'm the professional here or anything like that. And to be honest, you really need different control sensitivities for every single aircraft that you fly. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. So I'm going to press the escape key. I'm going to click on controls. I'm going to go ahead and select my gunfighter here. This is my primary control stick. Uh, this is a pretty slick joystick, by the way. Not cheap, but again, I've been doing this so long, I could save up for it. And in the top left corner, you're going to see this button that says the word sensitivity. So I'm going to go ahead and push that button. It's going to bring you to a sheet that looks a little bit like this. So what this is, is this shows you both what the actual uh, we have as far as controls goes, as well as what the response of the controls goes. So for example, you see if I pull back on my stick and I push forward on my stick, you can see that my y-axis there is moving along that particular thing. So underneath that, you're going to have a bunch of different settings linked to what we can do with them. Sensitivity refers to the shape of the response curve. Controls that are less sensitive tend to have less response during the initial part of the movement in more response when you get to the end of their movement. So when you do that, that's basically going to shift how touchy your controls feel. Now you're probably sitting here going, okay, so uh, why do you have that set to minus 19 as opposed to one to one? Now, if I crank this thing up to one to one, or at least I get relatively close to it, go set that to one to one, and we'll pop it right there. You'll notice that if I move my control, it moves exactly one to one position versus the position on the controls. I'm actually gonna press done, and I'm gonna go flip over to the um, apply and save real quick. Pop back to the simulator. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my control all the way back, push my controls all the way forward. Now you're sitting there going, hey, that makes perfect sense. That looks pretty darn good there. And it does kind of look pretty good, doesn't it? Except that in a real airplane, the distance that your controls travel does not match the distance that my control stick travels. Now, when I pull the stick all the way back, you can see that I have about, now right now, I'd say probably about six inches. If I pull this back, I have a total pull now of about between eight and maybe about six to eight inches backwards. Now my joystick, not only is it a joystick that I tilted backwards in order to pull this back, but also I didn't tilt it back six to eight inches. I actually tilted it back, um, if I can count here, about four inches, which means for every one of my inches of travel, the actual control in the real plane is traveling two inches. Now, the interesting thing here is you're like, well, that really shouldn't matter that much. And because, you know, you're sitting there going, well, if it's one to one, I pull it back, I get exactly the same amount, regardless of how far back I pull it back, it's going to give me the same reaction. Now, in the real world, just saying, well, if I pull my controls all the way back, again, you can see my elevator jerked up all the way here. Um, naturally, you're going to be getting the maximum performance of pulling up here. And you think that there's a linear relationship between the amount of the stuff that I pull back and how much pitch action I'm creating in the airplane. The reality is that's simply not true. As a matter of fact, uh, when it comes to pitching an aircraft, you get most of your pitch aircraft um, control about in this much turn. If I actually pull back the rest of the way, you actually start to really overload the tail and you don't get a linear relationship between how much your nose changes up and down versus where your controls are. So when you couple this with the fact that the controls are not physically moving as far as you're physically moving your controls, combining the two cause you to have a different sensation in the controls than would actually exist in the real aircraft. So the way we get around this is using sensitivity curves. So I'm gonna go back to my controls. I'm going to go back to my gunfighter here, press sensitivity, and you can see right now, like I said, it's in linear mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my sensitivity. I'm going to do a 25% increase in sensitivity on both sides. So what that means is if I move my joystick a tiny bit, it's going to result in having a very aggressive pitch response. So let's go ahead and pop back over to the simulator. We'll go ahead and apply and save just so you can see what this looks like. So I'm going to pull the controls about a quarter of the way back. Do you see how far this moves? Now, as I pull it all the way back, do you see how the back half, I'm pulling the stick all the way back, but look at how quickly you can see it start to change in pitch here, which has made my controls tremendously sensitive to very, very little control movements. This is usually not desirable in everything but an F-16. So let's go back over there and we'll do the opposite this time. So go back to my sensitivity. I'm gonna go ahead and take that. I'm gonna pull it all the way back. I'll make it nice and dramatic here. I'll make it minus 50%, which is a very substantial curve here. I'm gonna press done, go ahead and apply and save. We'll pop back over to the simulator. Now, when I pull this control back, I am pulling back my controller halfway and look at how far back it actually pulled it. I'll pull it back the rest of the way. 
Do you see how my last range of travel now has almost four inches of actual travel in the aircraft? So as a result, all my normal movements are damped because they're not nearly as sensitive. All my regular movements, as you can see, if it's an emergency, I still have access to the full thing, but all of these movements are going to be much, much more gentle. If I look at that over on the tail, I'll go ahead and pull back nice and slowly. See how I'm at half stick right now and the elevator's barely moved? Watch what happens when I pull for the rest of the stick. Do you see how that last bit is going to give me that huge jerk there? So you can see I've essentially desensitized my controls so that what I'm moving matches the action of the aircraft more accurately versus the way that I have it configured right now. Let's go ahead and bop back to my sensitivity. And let's take a look at some of the other options. So that's the basic. So if you're looking for a magic number here, you have to pick a number that makes sense to you. Uh, for me, I happen to like right around 19, 20%. But again, it depends on the aircraft. High performance military aircraft generally are going to be closer to linear. Uh, aircraft like the Airbus are also going to be closer to linear because in the real world, you have a tiny little stick that doesn't move far. Generally, the more throw the aircraft control has, thinking Boeing's for example, generally the less sensitive your controls are going to be. There's no magic number there. It's something you have to feel out. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at Dead Zone. What Dead Zone does is it gives us the ability to go ahead and dial in a little Dead Zone. Let me go ahead and pull this out. This little zone here, the controls are not even detected. Now, this particular controller I have is extremely high precision. So as a result, I can actually fly this with no Dead Zone whatsoever. However, as a general rule, you always want to have a little tiny bit of Dead Zone. Obviously, you don't want to do Dead Zone like that, because now I have no controls at all until... Oh, right there, we can start to see the control kicking in. I have to tip my controls all the way over here before it'll actually start kicking in. Obviously, if you have sloppy controls, this is a great way to simulate it. But your dead zone is basically going to not take an input until you cross a specific threshold. So in this case, let's set it to 5 or 6%. So you can see I'm still pushing the controls, but no response. Boop, I pop over that line, and now I start getting my response. Uh, dead zones are typically between 1% and 5%. If you have controls that are perfect, and by perfect, I mean they have no noise, and there's no chance you're accidentally to go like that with your hand, you can set this to zero. For me, I even leave it at two. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. This is the neutral point of your controls. So what happens with the neutral point of your controls is it sets a bias into your controls. So if you notice right now, my new position, even though I'm not touching my joystick, is at minus 20. If I set this the other way, my new position with the joystick without even touching it starts at positive 30. So the neutral allows you to shift the center. Think of it as a uh, software trim as another way. The other one you have is what they call the extremity dead zone. Now this one's a little weird. What this does is this reduces the saturation of your controls. Now you're sitting there going, what? The saturation refers to how much control you actually have. So for example, if I set this to 50%, what I've done is I've drained half of my total control authority out of the aircraft. So if I pull all the way back, notice I'm only getting 50% of my total control capability. Now, if I put this all the way to zero again, I'd pull back all the way. Note that I go all the way to 100% of my control authority. This is the most wonderful thing in the universe if you are flying helicopters. But for us, I'm not worried about it too much. If you find the aircraft too sensitive, this is especially true over in the aileron, and sensitivity isn't working for you, taking away some of the total throw of your controls is a great way to do this. The last one, of course, is uh, we have reactivity. Now, reactivity is interesting because it actually, if you look, it delays my controls. So if I pull this back, do you see how it goes and then it catches up to me? I'll turn the reactivity back to 100%. So now we have linear. There's no interpolation. When I put it at 50%, there's now 50% interpolation. If I put my reactivity down to 4%, you'll see that there's actually a delay in my controls. That's a very distinctive. The, what that does for me is that simulates controls that don't respond right away. So like you can see, oh... Look at how weird this response is. If I move my controls very slowly, you can see the reactivity uh, basically keeps up with me. But if I jerk on my controls, do you see how it takes a moment to actually catch up to me? This is a great way to make yourself absolutely insane, but it's also a great way to simulate airliner controls that are hydraulically powered. So I'm going to go crank that back up to 100%, and now I'm pretty good to go. Okay, so now we've gotten most of that stuff out of the way. You know, is there an extreme here? And actually, there is an extreme, and I want to kind of share that with you. Um, I have a pair of these uh, good old-fashioned uh, Satek Pro Flight Combat Rudder Pedals. I don't think you can get these anymore. And if you look at them, um, they are noisy. As a matter of fact, you can see my left pedal here is uh, absolutely garbage. You can see my right pedal right here is um, also kind of garbage. It actually thinks this is centered. It's not actually centered. And of course, you have my rudder itself, which actually works really, really well, which is lucky for me 
see. You'll notice this little tiny twitch right here that it's doing. That's simply it basically dancing in its dead zone, but it is not affecting the performance of the aircraft. If you see this little needle start dancing, that's a safe bet that you need to increase your dead zone here. So um, you can take a look here, and obviously uh, we've got some interesting issues here. You know, I can go like this and increase my neutrality. I could reduce my neutrality to kind of bring it back down to zero here. Um, I have my extreme dead zones. You know, if I crank this one up here, all I'm doing is shrinking its uh, But you can see that this, this control is literally so broken that it's stuck in the middle. Uh, this one, I'll kick it a couple times with my foot. This isn't supposed to be in the center. It's just that bad of a control after so many years of jamming on those brakes. So you can see if I tap the brake just a tiny bit, it freaks out. But this also means, unfortunately, this axis is always pushing the brake down. So as a result, the only way we can fix this is by changing the neutral position. And again, by changing the neutral position, you're also going to change the response of the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that back to zero. I'm going to go tap the escape key. I don't need this. Again, I don't need to mess with this. This works really, really well for me. You'll notice on the rudder axis, I have very low sensitivity because in the real world, believe it or not, rudders are pressure-based, in my opinion, versus distance-based. All right, so let's go back here, and uh, now we'll take a look at actually tuning one of these. Let's get back into my uh, aircraft here. I'm going to press apply and save. I haven't really done anything bad. You can see this is at minus 19%. So when I go and tip the ailerons, look at how not sensitive they are. My stick's halfway over, by the way. If I push it just towards the end, you watch it go brrrr, and basically speed up and get that last little piece there. This gives me a nice dull response that I can use for just about everything. If I float my head back, and you can take a look at the floor, you can see my rudder pedals are basically one-to-one -one in this particular case, even though they have a little little bit of sensitivity knocked out of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks in the air so you can kind of see what you need to change. All right, we're sitting up here up in the air, kind of relaxing on a little flight here. Now it's time to go ahead and uh, take a look at what these controls can do. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kill the automatic pilot here. I'm gonna need it right now. And now it's time to start experimenting. So right now my controls are set completely at minus 20 for pitch and minus 20 for ailerons here. So the first thing I always like to do is how much effort is it taking me in roll to go ahead and keep the aircraft steady? So right now I'm moving my stick to the right by about, I'm gonna say, probably about half an inch, probably you know, three, four centimeters, something like that. And I'm noticing it's not particularly difficult to hold the aircraft on a constant heading. And now, of course, what I like to do is bring in a little bit of trim to see how easy it is to do. And again, you want this to be, again, these aren't fighter aircraft, so you don't have to worry too, too much about getting it perfect. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more trim. I'm just gonna let go for a second. Just kind of feel out exactly what that feels like. All right, that feels pretty good. So now what we like to do is we like to go ahead and do gentle turns. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a nice turn like this. And this is turn easy to control. Do so I feel like I have to go like this with my controls in order to do it? If I feel like I do, then we probably have too much sensitivity. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute myself a nice gentle turn. We're gonna go ahead and bank a little bit more, start pulling back a little bit. And again, we're just trying to feel how difficult it is to keep the aircraft pointing in a straight line here. Go ahead and cancel that turn out. Is it taking longer than I expect it to? Yeah, it feels pretty neutral. If anything, the controls are actually a little unsensitive. But again, this aircraft is not the most high performance aircraft. So as far as a, a roll goes, that actually feels pretty good. You know, if I jam on the controls hard, that's going to give me the response that I expect it to have. And again, that's actually not too bad at all. You know, I don't feel like I'm over controlling. I don't feel like I'm under controlling. So that's actually pretty good sensitivity for this aircraft. Now, pitch is a little bit more difficult. So what I like to do is I like to lift the nose up. And I like to try to see how difficult it is to hold a specific pitch. So let's say I want to hold exactly 15 degrees. Am I feeling like I have to work out really, really hard to hold 15 degrees? Push down to 12 and a half degrees, and I'm just feeling it. Do I feel like it's too sensitive? Like right now, to be honest, I find this too sensitive. I'm noticing my hand is basically twitching just a teeny tiny bit, and it's causing me to change pitch. Go we'll drag down to 10 degrees, and again, notice there's that kind of weird up and down bouncing. There's no turbulence here, so that's not the problem. Push down to 5 degrees, and you can see how long does it take me to kind of settle at that particular angle. So if you find that you're kind of doing something like this, that means your sensitivity is up too high. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pause it real quick, tap the escape key. I find it just to be a little bit too high. Go back to my little engine here. I'll go ahead and check my pitch. And I'm going to reduce the sensitivity down to, let's say, minus 30. Again, a little goes a very long way. Trust me. So go back to apply and save. Jump back to the simulator. I'll go ahead and unpause. And let's try it again. Whoa, that makes a difference. Yeah, look at that. Notice the twitch is almost eliminated completely. Because now moving my hand doesn't achieve nearly as much effect. Let me pull back all the way up to 15 degrees, kind of back my hand out a little bit. Oh, that is a vacation. I should have said it to 30 before. That is so much better.
So you can see that little tiny reduction in sensitivity makes it that much easier to hold things precisely. Anybody who's doing any sort of instrument work appreciates how difficult it is to hold an aircraft steady. Again, if you feel yourself going like this, that probably means your sensitivity is up too high. If you're taking a lifetime to go ahead and position yourself somewhere, then your sensitivity is set too low. Again, you have to sit there and tweak it just a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go break the sensitivity intentionally to show you exactly what it can look like if you did it wrong. So I'm gonna go pop back over here and go back to my controls. Grab this, and now uh, we're gonna make this extremely irritating. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this. Of course, notice I didn't do an even one here. That was my mistake. I should have done it evenly. You should have yelled a little louder when you saw it on the screen. All right, so I'm gonna set my sensitivity in both directions uh, quite a bit higher. I'll apply and save. All right, so now my controls are sensitive. So I'm gonna go ahead and try my same strategy. Whoa, it doesn't take that much hand action. This is like driving a Miata. Go ahead and push down. Whoa! Oh my gosh. So like to get my total action, I'm gonna pull the controls back by three centimeters. Look at how sensitive that is. Go ahead and push the nose down. Whoa! Oh man. Okay, let's see if I can hold that at five degrees. All right, see how that twitch is starting to come back? I have a very steady hand, but you can see the slightest breath in my hand is causing this thing to twitch. If we were in a helicopter, this would be a nightmare. So I'm gonna pull back up to 15 degrees. Yes, I can get to the new angle very quickly, but for an aircraft like this, that is just unrealistic. You cannot move those controls nearly that fast. The control forces are much too high. Folks on force feedback, by the way, this is a very different experience. So I'm appreciating how sensitive the controls are, but I'm not appreciating this action, and I'm sure you folks at home aren't either. So I'm going to tap escape. I'm going to go back to controls. I'm going to try to pick something that's a little bit more linear. So I'll go back to sensitivity again. I'm going to set my again. I'm working just in pitch. Pitch, by the way, is where you're going to be spending the most time playing because that's the most difficult to get right because of how far a real joystick or a real controller can actually move. All right, let's go back in. All right, so this is linear. So now how far I pull back my controller. Oh, yeah, that's still sensitive. So if I want to jump back up to 15 degrees, let go. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm holding it as steady as I can. Okay, let's go down to five degrees. Yeah, it is definitely sensitive in the sense that it's easy to get to, but look at how difficult it is to settle. You know, I'm not a fighter jet. I don't need twitch movements here. I need it to be nice and gentle and easy to control. So go ahead and pause. I'll set it back the way that I had it before. I'm kind of liking the minus 25, to be honest. Make sure you set both axes to the same sensitivity. By the way, if you have a controller like a yoke that has a really, really, really long pull, you're not going to have to mess with this nearly as much on account of the fact that it's already going to be a natural distance. All right, let's go ahead and pause. Push the nose down. Let's pull back up. Whoa, you really got to pull this thing back now. Okay, that's good. Let's go down five degrees. Oh, that's nice. All right, I got what I liked. All right, hopefully this video is helpful in helping you understand uh, sensitivity curves. Again, there's something you have to play with. Um, generally, when it comes to rudder, you're going to have a very unsensitive control because in the real world, pushing the rudder literally that far is uh, more than enough to coordinate your turns. You know, you're never really doing anything like this unless you're trying to like slip an airplane in, in which case you're already going to be using the extreme throw of that rudder. So that's usually the axis that had the last. Again, if you're having trouble landing because everything's just a little too touchy, take a look at what your curves are set to. You'd be amazed how much easier that's going to make your life. Other than that, enjoy.